Hello, Internet. Today we're going to try to fix this very unusual problem that usually comes with the EVGA graphics cards. As you can see here, we have a 3070 Ti, FT3W, whatever that means. And it's got some issues. Uh, but at the very least, it's working. So let's switch back to the screen. So customer said he's got clock problems. So let's open up GPU-Z. We're going to uh, run Farmark at the same time so we can look at what does that even mean clock problems we got 121 percent tdp we're not even running anything um and if we were to run something the memory clock works fine but the gpu clock does not work fine whatsoever and therefore the performance is 70 fps so first thing what i want to see is if we have a problem with the circuit, uh, then we would be getting weird voltages, uh, particularly on the uh, 8 pin, 12, number 2, number 1, number 3, whatever. Uh, but we are reading good voltages across uh, all other pins. Uh, if I were to see a strange voltage reading, then I would panic. Uh, the only problem that I see here is that we got a weird TDP. So that could be BIOS related issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and switch. Uh, I'm going to switch to BIOS. We're going to restart the computer. These EVGA enthusiasts, they like to flash their cars with all sorts of incompatible BIOS. And uh, running into all sorts of problems. Or they do a shunt mod and then they flash it with something more powerful and things go haywire but today we're going to try and see if that's going to fix our problem just by switching to a different bias and even if the customer did not flash anything then the bias could simply get corrupted that does happen from time to time so let's go and open up the gpu z and take a look if we're still getting weird reading oh this is hlhr that makes it even worse nope same reading so let's go and shut down uh, take this thing apart, see what's causing this issue. Most likely there's a small little tiny chip on the board. Uh, issue is there's like two of them, but and you don't really know which one, whether it's the one in the back or the one at the front. Uh, this, by the way, is, is not 3080. This is a 3070, so it might only have one. Uh, I don't know. On the 3080s and 3090s, there's two. And you can't really tell which one's which, because they are interconnected to some degree. And they seem to be doing the exact same thing, just from the different end of the side of the board. So I'm going to go and take a look, uh, take this thing apart, take a look around, see what I can find, and uh, we'll have a look in just a second. Funny enough, I've never seen uh, EVGA disassembly process that's so difficult. I cannot, I'm struggling to undo the screws here. Uh, they seem to be flooded with stuff. I don't know if it's corrosion. Yeah, I think that we might have a corrosion on our hand. That would suck. Uh, but that would also explain the issues. So, yeah. I think we got a little bit of corrosion or some kind of... Some kind of contamination going on here. I don't know. Yeah, it seems like even this screw here... It's extremely hard to get off that nut. Okay, so we did that, and it doesn't want to come out because it's stuck. There we go. Yeah, most likely some kind of liquid had been spilled over this. There's no way that these screws would come out so difficult, or as difficult as they are. Definitely not normal. Oh yeah, I am ready to lift that cover and I don't see any liquid but there's something definitely leaked because if we look I don't see any water damage here if we look at this screw here I don't know if you can see this but there's like some kind of liquid that's seeped through the hole and it made its way all the way into the hole and then into the Onto the board, I'm guessing, and oh my god, we got one of them 
One of them doohickeys here from the EVJ. This must have been one of the early ones. Like a prototype of some sort, because this piece here is not normal. <laughs> I have never seen an EVJ card that comes with this thing. Uh, my guess, since it has a firmware on there, uh, my guess we don't have to worry about that. Uh, because it's likely to be some sort of an LED controller. Um, yeah, so that just makes this EVGA more interesting than the rest. Because I've never seen a board like this. So let's crack that open. Disconnect the fans. So my guess is that the uh, that chip is controlling the uh, fan on the right. Uh, usually on 3080s you see this controller sitting here. But in this case, this is an uh, older version of this uh, board design. And that controller is basically now living in here. Now, okay. So, let's uh, move that out of the way. Okay, there you go. So, yeah. there's That chip is not on this end. It's on this end, and I believe it's here. Let's uh, go under a microscope. See if we can take a closer look at this guy. And oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at all that goodies. Yep, it is definitely corrosion here. So it could be that the chip is uh, bad. But it could also be that the chip is basically having issues with any of them resistors. So one in particular... So this resistor in particular looks very sketchy. And uh, this one's probably okay. So all of them are, seem to be okay. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and wipe um, all of this off with some cleaner. And some toothbrush and then that should break some of that stuff off. And then we're going to see it better. So we know exactly which ones need to be reflown or replaced, most likely. If we can gather their value. Alright, so... Looks like the chips that are here looking okay. I mean the resistors. But this particular one here looks very bad and uh, I think that we can reflow the rest of them and uh, we might just get away with that um, this pin here on the connector on the uh, chip also looks a little corroded so we could um, we could just uh, maybe replace this resistor to be sure, because this one's looking really bad. We can reflow a couple of them here. Uh, and then we can probably re-solder that, uh, that, that chip. And uh, see if that helps. So, other than that, I don't think there's any issues anywhere else. Um, here's something. That's a controller for the memory. Looks fine. There's a little bit of corrosion, but it doesn't look like it's affecting anything. Alright, so let's do that. Okay, so i got to figure out what that resistor is. Um, the one that's on the bottom there. So I'm going to have to look and see where that resistor is connected. And if we look closely, we can kind of see that this resistor appears to be going from here into pin number one two three four and if we look at pretty much any board view for any 3070 pin four has this resistor and that's supposed to be 12 volt shunt in so there should be zero ohm let's check and see if that resistor is indeed zero ohm I mean, it should be, but it won't hurt to check. And this resistor... Uh, 
reads nothing. So maybe... What about the resistor next to it? Should that be zero as well? No, that one's supposed to be 49. Is this 49? 50, yeah, that one's. So this one's supposed to be zero ohm. And it is completely gone. So, which is interesting. Usually when you get a zero ohm, uh, when you get a uh, bad resistor around this chip, usually what you end up seeing is voltage issues rather than the TDP. But in this case, it might actually have been a bad resistor. So what we're going to do, so we're going to uh, see if we can reflow this pin here on the right especially. And then we're going to replace this resistor here. Let's get rid of that resistor. There you go. Put some fresh solder on there. So that we have something to solder it to. Like that. That should be okay. And let's go ahead and reflow. Power monitoring IC. Okay, that looks a lot better. We can probably touch up some of the resistors as well. If we... Uh, feel like there could be bad it won't hurt especially the ones that are near here are most likely uh, the most one of the likeliest suspects so give them a quick reflow like this And this guy here. That looks also okay. All right. Looks like we got one pad, a couple of pads shorted here on the side. Let's clean that up like so. All right, let's drop in a zero ohm resistor. There goes our resistor, right there. And that resistor is going to go somewhere in here. Let's add a little bit more flux to make it easier. There we go. That looks beautiful. Now let's observe the magic of Black Horse Repairs Flux. Ability to clean. To get cleaned. So I put some alcohol in here. And it just dissolves so well. I mean, Northridge Fix Flux cleans well too, but this... This is something else. I thought Northridge Fix cleaning was next level. This flux is the next level of cleaning. I have not seen any flux that cleans as easy as this. This is by far the easiest to clean flux on the market that I have ever tried. Chinese made uh european kingbo or whatever japanese i don't even know who makes that garbage anyway kingbo is trash steery amtec northridge i've tried them all all right so are we getting um good contact from a to b from here to here yes what about here? Are we reading 50 ohms? Yes. Perfect. So, and then this pad here, I'm guessing it's going to be connecting to this dot. 
Yes, we have connection. Perfect. Now let's power this thing on, see if it works. If that's all it was, it would be the easiest pizza today. A heat sink of some sort, some dirt cheap paste, just for testing purposes. And the HDMI cable, and here we go. Hopefully nothing blows up. Because a lot of times if you didn't solder something right with these controllers or power monitoring chips, things can blow up. As a matter of fact, um, a while back, I did exactly that. I soldered it upside down and it blew a hole on the board. <laughs> because, because you have 12 volt coming in into that chip from three different places so if not four okay let's open up GPU Z see if that fixed the problem we got 20% TDP so that definitely fixed the problem the clock is kind of changing let's see if we can run firmware how many frames per second are we gonna get now 287 and the clock is rising and we're limited by thermal protection I think we have a fix so I'm gonna have to put this thing together and uh, run more tests I'm guessing everything's gonna be okay but I uh, guess like I won't know until I test this 100% so hopefully this was educating and entertaining this problem is somewhat difficult to detect sometimes because you could be measuring the pins in this case by measuring the pins it would have been easier to detect the faulty resistor but a lot of times the problem is inside the chip and uh, only uh, and reading the voltages on the controller could give you an indicator uh, where the problem is whether it's the chip or the components around it but that's a bit more tricky it requires a little bit more experience to understand the uh, the readings and uh, but at the end of the day isn't that always the true for you to be able to fix something you gotta have experience uh, you know to some degree depending on what it is that would be it for this repair if anything goes wrong we'll continue uh, but I doubt anything's gonna go wrong I think everything's gonna be fine so uh, probably gonna put some fresh pads on there uh, though I doubt he needs any because these pads they look like they might be yeah they're too thick I don't like these pads I'm gonna have to replace them They're they're not even not even correct and they're kind of dry so yeah and then here as well so we'll put some new pads fresh paste we'll let it run and my guess everything's gonna be fine the driver mosfets uh, pads I wouldn't worry about too much because these usually last way longer than the memory pads so that would be it Thank you for watching and have a blessed day and goodbye.